and this has been like bubbling up throughout the talk of wanting to communicate and connect about energy, about you know thought and movement and all these kinds of things um, in the realm of experience. And I'm just you know feeling that that gratitude of of experience. Yeah, it's good. As Armel said earlier, if you hang around us, you will lose everything. Um, and, and that means undoing different spiritual pathways, different interpretations. This bliss is so deep and so consistent, but, but actually curiosity is, is a beautiful thing initially because curiosity has underneath it a sense of openness. If the I know mind is there and it thinks it knows what the world is and knows what's happening, then that's a closed mind. So I always love to nurture curiosity. I like curiosity, I like spontaneity, I like to a full allowance of all questions that come in. And as you come down the rabbit hole with me, actually your curiosity will lead you too. Uh, there will actually come a state of certainty that is so still and so serene that it'll, curiosity will be like a funny word, like, what was I so curious about? <laughs> when I'm everything, I'm all that it ever is and ever was and ever will be. Uh, even the curiosity, uh, you know, curiosity killed the cat. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that falls away. There's, there's a lot of things, a lot of you may have beliefs too about energy and energy work. I know Laura mentioned and everything. If you hang around me long enough, that's going too. Uh, anything, all these temporary kind of, of symbols that, that seem to involve motion, even God moving through the body and other teachings of Jeshua and so on and so forth. If you hang with me long enough, it's all going bye-bye. There's more than Kansas that's going bye-bye. I'm telling you, spiritual concepts are going bye-bye as well. It's emptiness, emptiness, and, and I'm happy to sit and, and go into this and take these things very deeply. You know, breath work, it's going bye-bye. Uh, I mean, uh, we could go around and around and around and around, but I'm telling you, the truth is, is a state of pure, pure stillness. And when you talk about feelings, and sometimes they're associated with the body, and so on and so forth, there's actually a workbook lesson, I believe it's 136, Sickness is a Defense Against the Truth, where Jesus says, uh, you can tell that you have practiced well by this. He's talking about the deep, authentic spiritual practice. You can tell that you have practiced well by this. The body will not feel at all. Whoa. It's like they say in the Matrix. Whoa. There are states of mind that are just beyond all of the shifting, changing, perceptual uh, kind of imaginations of the ego. And the actual presence of be still and know that I'm God is it takes you so deep that actually everything else that seemed to come before actually loses all this meaning entirely. So this is beautiful. I'm glad you're bringing that up, Greg, because because what this is is a sense of of openness where anything can be raised up. I I had students years ago that would bring to me a way of mastery and and, you know, the other voice, and all kinds of Bhagavad Gita, Ramana Maharshi, Adi Shanti, blah, blah, blah. And they would say, but this one says this, and this one says this, and this doesn't reconcile with this, and this doesn't reconcile, and maybe there's different interpretations of the truth that are all equally valid. I said, well, maybe you should go read the laws of chaos in A Course in Miracles. The f what's the first law of chaos? Does anybody remember it from A Course in Miracles? What? The truth is different for everyone? The truth is different for everyone. That's the first law of chaos. Of chaos. <laughs> but the truth is different for everyone. So, we're talking about an actual experience, and it's almost like how deep down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Because we're, it's an actual experience. Everything that even seems to be around us, like a canyons or a monastery or a ministry and everything, they're just props. The songs are just props. Uh, the art is just props. The motion, you know, a lot of us have, have, have used movements like uh, Tai Chi or yoga, uh, different things that have served <coughs> us well, and they serve and serve for a while, and then the bottom drops out. 
And, and whatever they seemed to be wasn't it at all. It was just another rung on the ladder. So if you're willing to just stay with me, you know, we're, we're on the path of, of letting it all go. And, and only one assumption, only one belief that you won't raise to the light, where you say, no, no I know I'm right about this one. I know, I'm, I know I'm right about breath work, and I know that the, the Spirit does come into the breath, and, and God does come into the body, and move through the body and everything. What does the Course in Miracles teach? Does anybody remember the Beyond All Idol section? God knows not form. Isn't that a beautiful sentence from A Course in Miracles in Jesus? God knows not form. Now, if I'm curious about the form, I'm not really curious about God. If God knows not form, and I'm curious about the form, I'm barking up the wrong tree. Now, I'll tell you one thing, the, the ego is a genius, and it can have you bark up a lot of trees. Uh, I could do a, a whole week on, on energy work, on dissolving the belief in energy work, dissolving prana, uh, dissolving, I mean, I, I go and I do these talks with the Sai Baba centers and dissolving the ideas of gurus and ascended masters, uh, dissolving the belief. Some people still tell me that food is causative and, you know, certain foods are more spiritual than other foods and it's better to be a vegetarian than a meat eater and concepts, concepts, concepts. Vegetarian. Okay. It's a self-concept. Meat eater. Okay. It's a self-concept. Energy work, okay, it's a self-concept. Musician, teacher, speaker. God is so far beyond everything in this per perceptual realm that all you have to do is tell God who you think you are in this world and God, God would just laugh. If God had a mouth and cheeks, God would laugh, but God doesn't have a mouth and cheeks. And God doesn't even laugh uh, because it's just so vast. So, what we're going to do this week, through everything that we do here, is it's just a let all the emotions up, all the anxieties up, all the fears, everything that's not supremely happy, just let it up into awareness. There really is no right or wrong with that, it's just beautiful permission and allowance. That's why we have these expression sessions. And don't censor it. Don't hold back. Don't feel like, oh, I don't, I'm not going to even say that because they'll think I'm not spiritual. No, we don't. We don't think that human beings are spiritual or unspiritual. Actually, we're we're letting go of all of that, and that's the the beauty of this. So thank you, thank you, Greg. I love that. And one last question, just for my for the clarity just pop it up, and then I will cease and desist. It sounds like it sounds like from what you said is. Uh, uh, is uh, just it sounds like I kind of you know what bubbles up and call it whatever it is is that I kind of you know what I heard is that if I if I don't hang with you or I don't follow the course it doesn't happen or or if I don't do that so I just notice that arise and say okay if I don't hang with David and if that's I don't good. follow that's, the course that's, that question hmm. was raised because what's speaking right now is a David and and of course the miracles is again that's just a, an illusory symbol and. And uh, as I do these talks around the world and speak at all these countries and everything, um, sometimes the Course gets mentioned and sometimes it's whatever. It could be eye gazing as a pathway to God or staring at a tree and remembering your presence or whatever. I'm totally unaffiliated with the Course in Miracles. I, I don't see the pathways anymore as significant. Um, it's a state of mind, it's an experience. And it's not personal, it's, it's not David, it's not an Armel. In fact, we'll be losing awareness of the, of the bodies and, and of all feeling in the bodies and everything. And then, and then there is no Armel, there is no David. Uh, and, but it's good that you're even aware of those thoughts that come up. Because, of course, it's very much like the original question. As long as we even think that we would take something as vast as truth, and associate it with a person, or a body, or a word, or anything, it's not it. Truth cannot be described or explained, but only experienced. That's wonderful. And so I'm, I think it's great. I'm, I always encourage everyone to go for the experience. In the end, let go of the theologies. The Course even says, forget this world, forget this Course. You know, in the end, you don't, 
have your Course in Miracles in your backpack and, and get through the gates. And Jesus will say, let go of that book. Now, come on. You don't think I'm going to let you in here with a book on your back. You know, it's, it's really letting go, that's kind of letting go of intellectual theologies too. So, I, I totally appreciate that.